Hey there, it's Mark with Mark's Astro Journey. In this imaging session, I'm targeting the Flaming Star Nebula, as you can see on the screen here in Stellarium, also known as C31. I don't have a permanent setup, so I have to take my equipment out every time and set it up. And so you can see that equipment here getting set up. So just take a quick look at the settings I used for my imaging session of IC405. I was using FITS as my output format and I was also um, targeting RAW 16 and my larger capture area of 5496 by 3672, exposure of 180, gain of 71, and then also you'll notice here uh, total frames captured were 66 and you can see the beginning and end time for the session. Here we are in Astro Pixel Processor. I've already kicked off the Analyze step, which includes calibration. And so it's going through the um, light frames, flat frames, dark frames, and bias frames, doing the calibration, and then analyzing the quality of the data that's captured. Of course, I've sped this up a lot. Um, this takes a little bit of time. So um, you can see you know, some of the information reports back to the screen as it's doing the processing. And I just wanted to clarify, this is not the Flame Nebula or NGC 2024 in Orion, uh, but rather this is the Flaming Star Nebula. It's an emission and reflection nebula in the constellation Auriga. And here's a quick look in Wikipedia. You can see some of the photos they have there, um, a few taken by amateur astronomers. Gives you an idea of what... Uh, one might expect to capture. So here in AstroPixel Processor, I'm kicking off the integrate step, which includes register, normalize, and integrate, taking all of the data that was captured and stacking it into a single image. I've sped this up a lot, obviously, and this lets you see some of the output it presents to the screen while it's doing its work. Now this nebula is surrounding a bluish irregular variable star named A.E. Aruga. Not quite sure about the pronunciation of that name. The spelling is A-U-R-I-G-A-E. It might end with an I sound, and I don't know. Um, but anyways, um, it says, it brings out here on Wikipedia that it's about 1,500 light years away from Earth, and also it's about five light years across. Now this integration is about to wrap up, and I will save this out as a TIFF, as well as a FITS file. So I've opened this FITS file up in Cyril because I want to look at the stacked image initially, and I'm also going to take a look at the histogram view, and I can kind of see the light pollution and gradient that I have. So I'm going to address that by actually doing some more work in Astro Pixel Processor using the Remove Light Pollution tool. So I'll open the file there. Back in Astro Pixel Processor, I've opened the image in the Light Pollution Removal tool. I'm going to turn on Saturation in the preview. I'm also going to increase Saturation to 30 and then reduce the threshold or protection to zero so that we can truly see the light pollution and gradient and what the background is looking like. And so now we'll choose regions of the sky that are only sky or background and not nebula. It's okay if it includes stars according to their documentation. And then we'll click on the recalculate button which will build a light pollution model and do the correction to the image. So if we chose a region of the sky that has nebula, it will flag that box as red and we can use the remove red button on the left to remove those region we, regions we had previously selected that we don't want to retain. And then um, what we're going to see is it's gradually going to be correcting the light pollution and the gradient in the image and improving our stacked image. So each time we do this, it's going to rebuild the light pollution model based upon all the regions that are selected. And this will gradually improve our image, as I said. And I'm not going to obviously make you wait through me iteratively going through this entire image and applying this, but I will um, move forward and show you the end result of stepping through and using this tool to remove the light pollution or gradient and calibrate the background. So here's the last correction I applied. I'm now going to save this. I'm satisfied with um, the correction that it's made and it goes ahead and gives a default name with some suffixes in the name to represent light pollution correction and calibration and background. And so now let's take a look at these side by side. I open them both in serial. On the left is the original. On the right is the after correction with APP for light pollution and background calibration. 
So the first thing I'm going to do here in Zero is crop the image just to get rid of any artifacts from stacking on the very edge of the image. Now I'm going to also remove the green noise. This is a simple step here, just apply. And I'll save the file with these two changes applied, cropped and green noise removed. And now I'm going to use the star, net star removal tool to remove the stars from the image so that I can process the nebula or the starless part of the image separately from the stars. I'll pre-stretch and run this. It'll take a little bit for this to run. Now we see our starless data and we'll save this out to a file. Now I'm going to use pixel math to take the image that I had cropped and remove the green noise and subtract the starless data to create the stars only portion of the data that's been captured. It's fairly simple in pixel math. We just load the two images, we assign a variable name to each image, and then we do a simple subtraction formula. Full minus starless. Apply that. And then we get our stars only data and we'll also save this to a file. I'm going to apply a stretch to the stars only data and actually I'm not increasing the stretch. I'm reducing it a little um, so that the stars aren't overpowering the image when I combine everything back together. Sometimes the stars are so bright that it overpowers the entire image. And I'll save that and just include stretched in the name so I recognize which file is which. And I'll also save this as a TIFF because I'm going to do my pro other post-processing in GIMP and I need those to be uh, TIFF files for that purpose. So now I have the starless data open in GIMP. I'm going to um, adjust the color curve and the reason I'm doing this is to slightly increase the intensity of the nebula but also bring back the contrast instead of using you know black point reduction or contrast as much I'm trying to use this option to not lose as much of the nebula the data captured related to the nebula sometimes it's there's some oversaturation and you know like it, if it's very red you might have to actually bring down the saturation to get more of the natural color and so now I'm going to bring in the um, stars only part of the data and this creates a new layer in GIMP so I'll adjust this layer change the settings of the layer to be addition instead of normal so that the two layers of data will merge together and um, now we can see what it's starting to look like with the data processed. But if I merge it, I can then um, do some final adjustments to try to slightly refine, you know, things like black level. I'm not going to make too huge of an adjustment, but just to get the contrast and the more natural look. Now I can export this as a TIFF file. And everybody has their own naming preferences, but I usually like to use you know, GIMP in the name. Um, that, I, that way I know what stage I was at when I created this file. Now let's open that file directly from the file system and take a look at it. Turned out pretty nice. Well, I hope you enjoyed this imaging session. I thought it uh, turned out pretty good, but I'd like to hear your feedback. Uh, please leave comments with what you think. And also, if you enjoy videos of this type, please uh, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification icon because uh, it's kind of tough to reach that uh, 1,000 initial subscribers on YouTube. Wishing you clear skies.